Okay, let's do a little meditation. Take a deep breath. And we're going to start by, for a few minutes, resting in the unconditioned I am. That means being aware of I am. The experience, the knowingness that you are. And letting every perception that comes up kind of just slide off of you. Don't focus on what appears. Focus more on the fact that you still are. Notice the ongoing nature of I am. That no matter what passes through the screen of I am, I am continues to be I am. So just take a couple minutes to notice the I am and detach from form, from assumption. Don't assume anything for a moment. Don't make any assumptions. Just be aware that you are. That's it. Not as this, not as a body, not as a mind, not as the senses. No assumptions. Just observe the very fact. Just acknowledge. That's all. Just acknowledge the fact that you exist. And know somewhere that this I am doesn't have any form of its own. It's observed you go through many, many, many state changes throughout your life. But the I am is still that timeless change the center at the center of the wheel of time. That which hears my voice now, that power of being is changeless. Doesn't mean it doesn't evolve at some level, but it doesn't undo itself. It cannot not exist. It cannot cease being. It has a timelessness to it. The power that knows that you're hearing my voice it's the same power that knew you were seeing your face in the mirror as an eight-year-old kid. And it's the same power that will know your experience 20 years from now. So I am this unconditioned, peaceful being. It's your eternal core. And you can just rest there. It's already what you are. It's not even a place so much. It's just not associating with any of the sense perceptions for just a moment. Just acknowledging that I am. Just an awareness of being, of existing. Now from this place of timelessness, where you can kind of view your entire incarnation, past and future years, as a single sort of movie, a dot on that circle of time which surrounds your center of timeless I am. So if you picture yourself in the emptiness, in the empty center of a circle, or if you want to picture it three-dimensionally, you can picture a sphere around you. It's the sphere of time. It's the sphere of the illusion of I am this or I am that. And in that sphere, there's different points, different intersections, different nodal points. So again, you can visualize it two-dimensionally as a circle around the center that's empty or as a sphere that's surrounding the center of emptiness of time as I am. Whatever comes easiest for you, it doesn't matter. And then on that circle, or sphere, there are these different points that you could call 10,000 years ago, or this particular lifetime, or five years from now in this particular lifetime. 
And the I am, the timeless, changeless core of it, is from where you are able to sort of access or communicate with those different nodal points. And right now, the one that you are used to being locked into for the most part is what you call by your present name, your present body, your present life, the present year 2022, and so on. However, you can contact your past, and there's different parallel versions of your past. It's just whatever you imagine it to be, whatever you want to remember it to be. There were very alternate versions, may not be the ones you experienced back then, so to speak, but they can be the ones that you activate now. Similarly, from this timeless center, you can also tune in to that innate sense of destiny that every being is born with. Every child wants to be a superhero on some level. In fact, they know that they are a superhero on some level. They have a sense of destiny. Every child is a dreamer. Now, you may not remember what this was like completely, but it doesn't matter. It was the case. That's all you should know. And this still exists. You are still that child. You're still that dreamer. And so you have a destiny. You have a sense of potential that you desire to allow to come through into your experience. A version of yourself that's the culmination of everything you know you deeply desire to be here for, to show up for, to teach, to share, to experience, to be an example of, to learn. There's a sense of destiny. So take 20 years from now, or whatever feels comfortable for you, but roughly 20 years from now, and just tune into the amazingness of everything that unfolded, how you grew into that completely powerful, satisfied version of yourself, how you accomplished everything you came here to accomplish. And view that 20 years from now, from the timeless sense of I am, the center of the sphere, the center of the circumference, the center of the circle. That means 20 years from now, your fulfilled destiny actually already happened. You don't have to choose to see it as your future. You can relate to it as your past. So 20 years from now, the fully emancipated, glorious, radiant version of you, the most fulfilled where all your desires just streamed together and you became that crystalline being that you became that you came here to crystallize, to be, to demonstrate, to give back to the creator knowledge of itself in that particular unique way that inspires you the most. But if you can see 20 years from now, if you can get a sense of that destiny having fulfilled itself 20 years from now, if you can feel that now, who's to say that didn't already happen? So pretend you're having a live review, maybe 30, 40 years from now or 80, I don't know how long you want to live. But you're looking then back onto the life that you've lived, the one that you currently call by your present name. And you see how all your desires were fulfilled. How you became that crystalline expression of the perfection of your own unique calling. And all the beauty and love around you. All the freedom, all the power, all the abundance, all the creativity, all the transformed beings whole different world, maybe ETs, whatever floats your boat, whatever is part of your destiny, being an ambassador between different worlds, being a channel, different kinds of information and love light codes. But view it as your past. Remember how amazing your life was 20 years from now. So place 20 years from now, 20 years in your past. Feeling wise, this is just an imaginary exercise, but it works. You wish to relate to your fulfilled state, your most fulfilled state, not just this one little thing that you want to happen within the next year. No, I'm talking about your destiny fulfilled state, where all the streams of all your seemingly disconnected excitements are all flowing into one single stream and they've all led up to that beautiful evolutionary cycle expression in time feel that state fulfilled 20 years from now but then know from the soul's point of view from the life review from the timeless core that it happened in the past literally it fulfilled itself in the past 
it happened. Rest in that certainty, that feeling of the wish fulfilled, of the destiny fulfilled, even more powerful. Who cares about the little wishes here and there? They're all part of a bigger destiny. They're all part of who you desire to become as a crystalline expression of the creator. It's a crystallized entity. Your destiny fulfilled itself. That's all you need to know. You see, you don't have to worry about today. You don't have to worry about next week. You don't have to worry about next year because you know it all came together. You remember it. That's how it happened. So now you're just watching the movie of your physical present life with absolute certainty as to its outcome. You know exactly where it's all leading. So why worry about what shape it takes in the meantime? That's just the bridge of occurrences. That's just the excuses in the causal world of linear time. But you know it already happened because you can see it from a timeless point of view. You can tap into your future from a timeless point of view and relate to it as having already happened. When you do this, when you click in with this, when you practice this every day, a little bit, it gives you a sense of power and confidence that nobody and no event in this world can take away. It's unthreatenable because you already know where it leads. How could you worry when you know your destiny fulfilled itself? What does it matter? What's happening now? The appearances don't matter. And you know in this conviction that everything is being drawn to you to fulfill that state because it already happened for you. You're already convinced of it. It doesn't have to be specific if you don't have specifics arise in your vision, but it can be, it can be helpful, but it's mostly just a feeling of your destiny, this superhero feeling that you had as a child, this sense of this big dream that you came here to fulfill and explore this grand adventure. That is what you wish to feel fulfilled. That's the destiny fulfilled state. It's more powerful than a wish fulfilled state. It's more permanent. It gives you confidence. And then all your intermittent desires will just make sense in this bigger scheme of what you already know unfolded perfectly. And then things can accelerate because you're not resisting things because you're not reflecting what's happening now as if it has any meaning or substance or authority or external realness to it. It doesn't. It's just shadow. It's just mirrors, smoke and mirrors of your state of being. Now watch how it accelerates when you continue to remember how your destiny fulfilled itself 20 years ago and how glorious it was. Then nobody can tell you anything, can call you by any name. Any seeming difficult occurrence can arise and it doesn't face you because you already know how the movie ended. And it was with profound satisfaction that surpassed all your wildest human expectations. That's how your destiny unfolded itself. And you remember this because it happened 20 years ago when you live reviewed yourself. It was such a good life to live. It was such an amazing journey and it was all worth it in the end. And you remember that when you started to align with that, which was this now, things started flowing for you so much more. You became so confident without any arrogance. It's just this peaceful, loving, absolute certainty, conviction. It's the number one on the scale of the six point scale of the emotional thingy. So it's that number one. It's that absolute certainty where you're intouchable, where circumstances really don't have any matter. State of being produces matter. State of being matters. Often as human minds, we are so focused on what's presently happening that we forget our destiny. We forget to align to what we truly are. And then what can this mirror world do but reflect what we believe? So if you zoom out, fast forward, and then put it in your past, anchor it in, lock it in, remember how amazing it was. Everything came out more than all right. Now that's a power you can't buy in any store.
And what happens to your ability to love everything exactly as it is? It skyrockets, it becomes complete. Because there's no longer anything separate from your life's destiny. It's all there. It's all part of the culmination of it. So how could you not love what other people would call a challenging circumstance? If you already know where it leads, how could you not love it? And when you love it, what happens? Negativity cannot persist. It has to shift to something positive. It has to accelerate into your destiny. And then you're actually creating a different timeline. What happened in the one you just remember 20 years from now will happen, will culminate in eight years from now. Because you've accelerated by remembering what happened 20 years from now in your past. Therefore, you change your timeline because you change your frequency now in such a profound way that things started happening much sooner. So 20 years from now will be even more grand, more completed, more themes will be fulfilled and infused into your life experience. More evolution, more growth, more joy, more perfection will have been attained because you're doing this exercise right now. See, it's all a timeless, made up joke in a way. You can make it whatever you want it to be. Just align to destiny fulfilled. And then what happens to your state of I am this, so to speak? Doesn't it become so much more naturally obvious that you are? Don't you feel the clarity, that awakening, that enlightenment, that lucidity, that peace, that stability also come into your experience because you're no longer fighting with what happens, because you've attained a confidence in your destiny? Therefore, you can rest in the I am naturally. You can rest in the unconditioned state naturally because there's nothing pulling you out into fighting with the shadows and the shapes on the mirror. Therefore, you're naturally rested as the I am. Therefore, destiny fulfilled state equals the awakened state. Or at least grants you much greater access to it in a much more effortless way. The differentiation between God and form begins to dissolve. You feel the God state now because you're in the state of already being accomplished. Which is what the feeling of enlightenment really is, is a sense of completion and wholeness. But if you keep doubting your destiny and keep fighting with the little in-between desires, then there's no space and time and energy for you to just naturally notice your freedom, your divinity, your infinite nature. But if you know the movie's going to end exactly the way you knew it would when you were a kid, exactly the way you knew it would. When you were a kid, you had no doubt. What you dreamed, you knew you were going to be that. I remember, I knew I was going to be Superman one day. I just, I had no doubt about it. No doubt. Not whatsoever. I knew my hair color would change. I knew I'd be able to fly one day. I knew I'd be able to help people. That whole feeling that that represented to me as an archetype, I had zero doubt that I would become what that archetype represented to me at the time. Zero doubt. And you've all had that experience when you were a kid at some point, when you were in that dreaming state. What if you could recapture that feeling and then rest in the peace of I am, because of the certainty of your relative life, just working its way through to that destiny fulfilled. And you remember already what it was like. Therefore, there's nothing that could phase you. So your awareness remains undisturbed. Your peace remains undisturbed. Your, your communion with God, your sense of oneness with God remains clear, that channel remains open. Wasn't it wonderful? Wasn't it a wonderful life? Oh my God, how everything culminated and started to make sense. Where everything you worried about just started falling away. And everything you knew you were just came into full fruition and everyone around you recognized it too. And they were their best selves as too. So who cares about what appears? Why care? Why give it any meaning? Why give it any external reality or authority when it has none? You already know what happened. It's your movie. There's nothing else out there. 
but the power of your own consciousness and determination. So let them do their thing. Let them misunderstand. Let them whatever. Them being the circumstances, them being people, them being events, whatever it is. Let them. You already know what happened. You already know who you became in this lifetime. You remember the celebration of it, a sheer joy. So don't worry, the bridge of occurrences will unfold in your linear perception of time. But if you're anchored in that state, it doesn't matter because you're already there. What is reality? Reality isn't what's happening physically. Reality is whatever you feel it to, to be in each moment. Again, if you desire it, it's because you already are it. It's just calling, it's calling the one you assume yourself to be into its own resurrection. So bury your old self and remember your future as if it happened in your recent past. What a glorious life you've lived. Everything you wanted became. Everything you knew you were born to be happened, just happened. Magically, just happened. It all came together. The loss never failed. Creation, the infinite power of your own free will never failed. So now you have a strong connection with who you know you are. The stronger you allow that to be present in your field, the less faced you'll be by anyone or anything. And like I said, that's a power you can't buy. That's a fearlessness. It cannot be conquered. And that reveals to you that truly the world and other people have no power over you whatsoever. It's only what you decree to be true for you that has any sway in your world. Then you can love, not react. You don't have to react anymore. Why would you react to something if it's not real, nor final? See, you can never fail because it's never final. How could you fail if it's not final? It's not possible. It's actually, per definition, impossible to fail if what appears is not final. And it's not even real, even while it appears. 